Hello there. Welcome to another pattern recognition video. In this one, we are going to look at a tactical pattern. And this tactical pattern we will call Lohmann's move. Now, the most famous example of this pattern happened in a game where Lohmann had the black pieces in a symbol. But this is sort of uh, the skeleton of the pattern. This is for black. White has a pawn that he wants to promote. But at the moment, it looks like black can't prevent the promotion. The king is badly placed. But Lohmann's tactic is simple once you see it. We will simply make a square for the king to uh, get the pawn. We will play g5. It comes with check, very important. And then the king is in time to stop the pawn. And sometimes this gives us a draw. In this case, it gives us the win because the white king is simply outside the square of the pawn. It's not going to catch up to the pawn. It's not inside this square. Like I said, the first occurrence of this was in a simul where Emmanuel Lasker had white against Rudolf Johannes Lohmann. Now it looked like Lasker was doing a good job here, and indeed he was when he played rook to f8. Now this lures the king to f8, and he can't catch up to the pawn. This should be winning. White makes a new queen. All he has to do is to walk his king over to the black rook. Now this was a symbol, so we'll forgive Lasker for his uh, blundering here, but instead of walking towards the rook, which should be an easy draw. Lasker went with the king to g5. And this turned out to be a horrible idea. So can you figure out what Lohmann played here? And this is sort of the main pattern. Uh, to sacrifice something to lure your opponent into giving you the availability to play this pawn move that we looked at first. So that's the key. The pawn move itself is not so difficult, but figuring out that you can make the sacrifice is the key. So of course the rook is going to capture the pawn, so you have to play this, but now pawn check and king g7, and black has too many pawns here, he will queen and win. Now I have several examples here. Uh, let's have a look at this one. It looks like white is in huge trouble. This pawn is about to queen. But there is a way. This is the way. White plays h3 check. Okay. First of all, if, if we take, the knight gives a check, we pick up the pawn. No can do. So we try to hold on. And the main line, you can figure other lines out yourself, but the main line is to play a move like king to f5. And then we can play knight to d4, check. And black has to take this because otherwise we take the pawn on e2. So black takes, bishop takes d4. Now rook e7, we want to stop the pawn. Black thinks he can block the rook, but he will run out of luck once we take the bishop on e5. And we've set up Lohmann's move here, f4 check followed by king f2. We're in time to stop the pawn, and this one will queen first. Just a quick run through here. We're going to cover the h1 square, and we're, uh, we're in time here. Now, knowledge of this pattern can, can be crucial. Here's a game that uh, Gary Kasparov played against Jan Timon. And here he played the move rook c6. Timon played c4, intending to either push this pawn or, if rook takes, to capture this pawn. To simplify, then maybe come here after you take this pawn and simplify to a drawn ending. But Kasparov found a very nice idea. He took with the king on c4, which at first glance looks suicidal because d3, king takes d5 and d2. And this square is covered, so how are we going to stop the pawn? The rook is not coming here. And it's not coming here. But here, knowledge of, of Lohmann's move helps tremendously. It's not the exact same pattern, but we lure the king to where 
we can actually do something with it. Here we played g4, and the Timon actually resigned. The rook covers the sixth rank. The, the king has to come back, and now the rook comes here to, to pick up the pawn. Usually in, in our pattern, the king arrives, but here the rook comes. Also, you can very often you know, use a pattern to apply it in other circumstances, and this is a prime example. Uh, so which one should I leave as, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this one. Okay, so another typical example, we've seen, yeah, many similar examples, rook h1. Looks like, again, black is playing a nice move and is about the queen here. But we all know better by now, then we simply play rook f5, stopping the pawn, then giving the check. And bring in the king. And we have three against one here. And we're gonna win. So my final example. No, I have this one. I have two more. So let's start with uh, this one. It's quite difficult. It's white to move. And again, we have what seems like an an unstoppable pawn. I mean, what can we do? Well, once again, you, you can always pause the video and try to solve. I'm going to give you the solution. That's spectacular. So we have to stop the pawn. Surprisingly, we start with bishop c5 check. Now, what does this do? Well, first of all, if black captures our pawn on c6, we can play knight b4 check and pick up the a2 pawn. And we don't lose the game. We might even win with some luck. If knight takes c5, we can play c7. And we are going to queen. If king d7, all of a sudden it's white who's winning because check. And we cover the queening square. And we win. So after bishop c5 check, king e5 looks like the best winning attempt for black. But now there's c7. We want to make a queen. Black says, okay, I'll take it. And I'll make a queen next move. No such luck, says white. Bishop to d4, check. Now, if the king moves back, I can play a pawn move. Bishop covers it, or the king comes over. So king takes d4. But now, sort of very similar to Loma's move, instead of it being a rook, it's a knight. If you queen now, I'm coming in with a check. You could make, you could make a knight, but I'll just play king b1. So this will be draw if you make something... Uh, on a1 so let's take but now we know the mechanism b4 check king takes and king comes over to pick up the pawn so the final example i'm going to uh, show you oh it's not this one miscusi so this one why to move i mean you got this one Pause if you have to, but I mean, we were looking at very similar examples. Black just, yeah, played queen f2, trying to be clever, but he was too clever for his own good because takes and you got it, rook takes f5, g4 check, and the king comes in. We could protect the pawn, but we can always just get behind it. Since we have a passer here, we are winning. So you have to be careful about having a passer if this comes up. Uh, if not, you could be in trouble. So we should have mastered this uh, pattern. And if you've done so, you should be able to figure out how white gets out of this one. Again, the king can't reach the pass pawn. It's gonna queen. So what can we do? The rook also looks pretty bad. But there is a way. If we apply the patterns, we can do it. So tell me in, in the comments if you can figure this one out. And keep drilling them tactics. Keep drilling the pattern recognition. Do it every day. This is the way.